first speaker of the evening uh, is Jamie Dunstan. She is the artistic producer of Calgary Young People's Theatre and is also the founder and former artistic director of Verb Theatre. She is an active theatre director here in Calgary. Please welcome Jamie Dunstan. On day one of theater school, the very first thing they teach you is about a guy named Aristotle and something he wrote called the Poetics, which sounds beautiful but is actually boring as hell. <laughs> I think Aristotle found it boring too because after he wrote it, he apparently turned to stone. <laughs> In the Poetics scene here, Aristotle said that there were six elements of drama. In order of importance, they are plot, character, thought, language, song, and at the very bottom, spectacle. Spectacle is what we see on stage, the visual illusions, set, light, costumes, bodies. Now, to Aristotle, spectacle was the least important element of drama. Spectacle was the element most likely to distract the audience away from the story and characters. And yet, I bet Aristotle never imagined this image of him flying a muscular rubber duck through a laser battle with AI dinosaurs while fighting with a seagull over a Safeway rotisserie chicken. <laughs> I don't know why he thought that would be so distracting. haven't we proven Aristotle wrong? Audiences love spectacle. When I directed Misery at Vertigo Theatre in 2022, we spent $7,000 having customized prosthetic legs constructed that could break each night when Annie hits Paul with a sledgehammer. <laughs> I'm told one audience member was taken to the hospital from fear. <laughs> now that's the power of spectacle. And anyway, who says story is so important? When babies first start to look at books, isn't it the spectacle that they are drawn to? The colors and the shapes and the imaginative scenes, the pop-up books with their peekaboo reveals. Babies don't care about story. <laughs> well, this is a picture of my nephew, Elliot, reading a picture book with his mom, my sister. <laughs> I actually bought this picture book for him. <laughs> I adore my nephew. So much. <laughs> I, uh, I actually can't have kids, so this is, uh, this is special for me. Anyway, back to spectacle. Actually, can I show you one more? <laughs> this is Elliot and me at the zoo last summer. I took him to see the red pandas. Elliot and Auntie Jamie, he calls me Mamie because he can't say the J yet. <laughs> Mamie. This next one is the first time I met him. <laughs> it's, it's funny, but when I first found out I couldn't have kids, I didn't really understand how much it would affect me. I didn't understand that years later, when I met Elliot for the first time, I would feel both unimaginable love and unspeakable grief. Can you see it? This is a picture of a page from my childhood diary. Not long after I found out I couldn't have kids, I just stopped writing in it. Um, the day I found out why I can't have kids was a day like any other. I'm, uh, I'm not actually sure if I remember the date now, but there are images from that day that seem to have stuck in my head forever. Tiny moments of spectacle printed into the inside of my lungs. Um, I'll show you some of those images now. Uh, this first picture is a picture of the snow that was on the ground <laughs> that day. It was so white in the evening streetlights, I couldn't understand why the snow had sparkle to it when nothing else seemed to anymore. Um, this next picture is of the wall in my doctor's office. <laughs> I, I think the paint color was called cloud white or Swiss coffee white. I don't know. I just kept staring at it. I didn't want to look at my doctor because she had this look on her face that doctors shouldn't look so scared. This next one is a picture of my DNA. Probably shouldn't have made it life-sized. 
But if you look closely, you might notice the same thing that scared my doctors. XY chromosomes instead of XX. I was born with male DNA. I am male. But something went wrong. If you're confused, imagine how I felt. This is a picture of the sheet on my bed that I hid under for days, erasing everything I thought I knew about myself and the world around me. Until one day, eventually, that big white sheet started looking less and less like a void and more and more like a blank canvas. Now this picture is a little different from the last six slides because this one actually has nothing on it. <laughs> Unlike the others. Because this slide is about realizing that an empty space isn't empty at all. It's full of potential, of all the things you don't even know you can imagine yet. For example, this next slide is a picture of the Big Bang, the blinding light when it exploded all of the stars, which make up you and me and Cirque du Soleil acrobats and my nephew Elliot and Aristotle. And because we all come from this light, we are all stars in one big constellation. This next picture probably looks exactly the same, but it's actually the blinding light that actors see when they look out across the audience from the stage. Is it the stage lights glowing in their eyes, or is it you? And when you look up at me on the stage, what do you see? What is the spectacle of my body telling you? This next picture didn't really turn out because um, <laughs> I immediately dropped it, uh, the camera on the floor because I took this picture when Elliot said my name for the first time. I dropped the phone and ran to him because I don't need a picture to remember the sound of my nephew's voice saying my name. Song is more important than spectacle. This is a picture of Aristotle and I meeting up in heaven. We do an elaborate high five that seems spontaneous, but is actually very choreographed. If you can't see that picture, it's probably because you're not in heaven because of that thing you did. <laughs> and don't worry, what you see is never the whole story anyway. Thank you.